Good morning, everybody. If it's morning for you, or evening if you're somewhere else. I'm working with a new mic today, so I'm talking a little bit different, because I just want to make sure that I don't blast it. It's a very sensitive mic. Uh, but today we're going to look at the, what's been going on the last couple of weeks. I haven't had a video in the last couple of weeks showing you what's going on, so here we go. Unfortunately, I got a little bit sidetracked with a scorecard tool because I was watching some baseball games and I really just wanted to uh, make a digital version of the paper scorecards I'd been using so that I wouldn't have to keep printing them and, and stuff like that. So this is my first attempt at the scorecard and I want to warn you, it is ugly. I mean, this is kind of what a, n a normal scorecard looks like. You've got the innings at the top here. Uh, in case you have extra innings, it goes all the way to 14. It's got some totals down here for runs and hits and whatnot. And then you've got a list of players. The problem with this is, as you can see, this blue square here, this blue rectangle, is the view of my game. Um, and this scorecard is huge. So I started to experiment with some cameras and moving the camera with the mouse so that you could move all over the scorecard and do what you needed to do. But the problem is that that was kind of bringing new challenges as far as making the mouse move in the way you wanted it to and move it smoothly and not really just hurt your eyes with all of the little details that are on the scorecard. So, so what I ended up doing was trying to think a little bit more like a programmer. And our programmer sees stuff that is repeated, and he makes it not repeat because anything repeated is just not that's just not how you do it, right? So I took basically a sample of one of those pieces. You can see we've got we've got here the base path and what hit they got, uh, strikes, balls, you know that kind of thing. I took it all and condensed it down into one at bat essentially, which would be here. Uh, let's just go ahead and run this because there's no reason to look at it without. Oh man, I got to get rid of those sounds. Uh, let's go ahead and look at it live because there's no reason to look at it without it being in its functional state. Okay, so I moved it to this home and visitor tab, and we can look at those here on the scene. Uh, in order to use those tabs, you'll need a tab control. Uh, what is it called? It's called a tab container. You can align the tabs, and there's some basic settings there. Underneath, you will need to have a tab. Makes sense, right? Uh, there's a tab for home here, a tab for visitor. And underneath those, I just have a instanced scene. And then we can open up that scene as well. There's a lot of stuff going on in this scene, but since it's instanced onto this tool, it, it doesn't look so messy. Uh, let's go back to our running version of it. We have the different tabs, and there was a couple of problems immediately that I wanted to try to solve. As you can see, there's we just started it, and there's already names in here. I'm a Cubs fan, so I've got Cubs listed in there, and they're not all in the right order or nothing like that. It's just some random stuff in there. Some of these numbers, jersey numbers, might even be wrong. But those are loading from a global variable, so I didn't have to type any of those in, which would come in handy if I have a certain team that I want to set, and I want to keep it there. Now, I don't have a way to edit and save those yet. That's another work in progress. But what do we have here? We've got a team block up here we can type in. Um, we can type in a date. And I have no checks or anything on this. This is completely free form. You can put whatever you want. The only limit I have on this is the number of characters. I, I believe I have just a couple more there, yeah, to allow you to put the dates in there. Uh, now, one, the first trick I had to come up with was when you go to this other tab, will it retain that information? And I, I figured that one out. Uh, but let's put a visitor team on here. Let's say they're going against the Cardinals or something. So you've got a score, and all of this stuff is retained. And you, you'll see on this one I still have Cubs listed, but the numbers are different. So that you can tell the difference between the different tabs. Um, but then you've got, uh, let's say somebody came up to bat. Uh, he got a, you know, it's a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Uh, there's a lot of little tiny things that it's going to take to get this to program correctly, cause, but I would like to have it so that, let's say he got a single, I kind of want a line that goes from here and kind of fills in these dots right here and makes it appear more solid. 
so that the base path will go all the way around and so that it won't just be a lit up square but there will be a graphic that really kind of helps see the progression around the bases and then once it gets home uh, all the way around to the home plate again I would like to have that automatically mark uh, the whole thing in solid you know something like that as much as I can programmatically make this work I would love to do that uh, and then here is just a result drop down so you can change this as as it goes you could say he got a single and then from there it's handled by this now this here is kind of a experimental tool because when I when I am scoring a game I like to tell I like to write down if it's a f a fly ball or a liner or a pop fly and if they were out so like if it was a pop fly to the shortstop I would do a pop fly six and bam they'd be marked and ready to go now the question mark brings up a graphic which I will be switching out because it's not my art I'm gonna have to make my own uh, but that will remind people of the player positions in case they need that you can turn that off again uh, but then more complicated plays like it's a double if it's a double play I could say six uh, was it six four three shortstop to the uh, second baseman to the first baseman I would record that based on the order I clicked them in so if it was it could be any number of players I could just say uh, let's say the third baseman threw it to the shortstop who threw it to first I mean I want to record that that order in which I click those and have that be what's saved as what happened during the play uh, I hope that makes sense um, and then down here we have outs. This is going to hopefully be automated as well. Right now they're just toggle buttons. You can click them yourself. But I would like to have it so that this program and this tool is smart enough to know that when he's out, it will mark it. And that there's a lot of little complicated things that will come along with that, but we'll get there when we get there. Now down here we also have this substitution because during the during a game uh, or any at any time one of these people one of these batters could be switched out so I want to have a tool down here to add a jersey number and what position he's going in for um, lineup position I believe this needs to be changed to make a little bit more sense for what that means but I believe that is the batting order number I don't know why that blocks so wide for that but uh, and then the inning that he came in so we'll say seventh inning and who it is and then we would hit the sub button right now that does nothing but eventually that will plop that into the lineup and save it and then at the very end of all of this this is just one kind of at bat we have to somehow save retain and organize all of the data from several of these little cards uh, and let's see that's the visitor this is the home it does retain that information as you go from tab to tab but I'm gonna have to go from here and say next batter it's gonna have to be a next batter button or something like that this blue arrow which I will be changing because I don't I don't like the graphic but that will be indicating which batter is at the plate and hopefully that will be automated as well and it will just slide down maybe even have a nice little animation a lot a lot of little tiny little things to work on but that's what that's what I spent the last couple of weeks working on and it, because there's no timeline I don't work for some big company I'm free to work on whatever I feel like working on at the time but it also means it, that actually put me behind quite a bit on actually making this a complete game so the next couple of weeks I kind of want to get out of that scorecard tool because that is kind of sort of a bonus feature that has not a whole lot to do with the game and I'd like to get back to actually playing some baseball and getting the players moving right and getting the fielders moving right and working out all the logistics and the vectors and all the whatnot there but for this episode the new uh, controls that I worked on were just the tab uh, what is it tab container and tabs they were pretty straightforward to use didn't have a whole lot of troubles there but if you had questions 
I'm sure there's, I'm sure I can do a little bit of reading and figure it out, or there's probably a video out there already. But that's how those work. And that's all that's happened in the next, in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be going back to the normal big game here and working on it. And I'll see you guys then. See you later.